Hey, how's it going guys? This is Nick at stridewise.com. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a close look at the Jones lace-up boot from the Fry Company. So the Fry Company was founded in Massachusetts all the way back in 1863. They launched their first boot in 1888, and according to the Fry Company, they're the oldest continuously operated shoe company in the United States very very old company they've made a lot of custom boots over the years for a lot of famous bastions of masculinity like uh, general george s Patton and bing crosby and lots and lots and lots of soldiers in world war ii as well but the jones lace-up boot is one of their less rugged more dressy boots so let's take a closer look so the most striking thing about the Jones lace-up, in my opinion, is definitely the depth of color in this leather. This is made, it's not made from cowhide, it's made from a nice full grain calf skin leather. So it's got this really nice depth of color. It's a bit thinner than your regular cowhide from adult uh, cows. Nonetheless, I really think it does look very, very good. Otherwise, there's not a lot going on in this boot that is a very simple boot. It's a very simple, classy kind of boot. In a lot of places, Fry actually calls this a work boot or a combat boot even. It's absolutely nothing of the sort. This is a dress boot. It has, uh, it doesn't have anything flashy going on. There's no like flashy toe caps. There's no weird stitching. Even the eyelets here, there's no like plastic or metal external eyelets. On the bottom, there's absolutely no grip whatsoever. I could not see these working in any sort of a, uh, like, a like a factory floor and definitely not at any sort of combat boot. These are nice dress boots. I've worn them with a gray suit and a blue suit myself and I think they work great. So the name of the game is simplicity and color depth. All right, so let's talk about this leather. This is calfskin leather. Now, one of the differences between calfskin leather and cowhide, you know, the leather from adult cows, it's a little bit thinner. It wrinkles a bit more finely as well. So some people prefer the look of it as it ages. Um, and even though it is thinner, technically ounce for ounce, it has more tensile strength because the fibers are closer together. So that's a bonus that some people see with calfskin leather. This is vegetable tanned as well. So a lot of people consider that the best kind of tanning for boots as well for boot leather it is more expensive and time consuming than something like chrome tanning but nonetheless a lot of people look for vegetable tanned leather and it's also full grain so full grain calfskin leather full grain means it comes from the top layer of the hide of the animal uh, it can it has a bit more character it has more color inconsistencies than something like top grain which has that top layer sanded away but it's more durable and it just looks nicer as it ages it gets more of a patina and just most people just always look for full grain leather when they're talking about boots they want to age well. The only other thing worth mentioning with these boots is that they do scratch pretty easily. Now they are dress boots so that's to be expected. A lot of people aren't going to be disappointed by that. They are dress boots. Nonetheless, the very first time I wore these, even though I was just going out to a pizza restaurant, I did get several scratches on it. So that's worth pointing out. You have to be a little bit careful when you're wearing these guys. Now when it comes to taking care of this leather, I was very sternly told by a Fry customer service representative that you should not wear them in the rain or in inclement weather or anything like that. These are not the kind of Goodyear welted boots that you want to jump around in puddles in. You want to keep them pretty dry and even when it comes to like just generally cleaning it and getting rid of dust, you even are not supposed to use a horsehair brush. A lot of guys, including myself, have a horsehair brush uh, on their stand to just get rid of extra dirt. It helps to heat up the leather a bit, which helps to move the oils around. This leather is just a bit too sensitive. Uh, it's likely to scratch if you use a horsehair brush. Instead, you want to get rid of dirt with a soft buffing cloth. Outside of that, Fry recommends using a uh, leather conditioning cream every few months. You would probably be fine with Venetian shoe cream, which is a favorite of a lot of guys. But Fry says that you should use their own leather conditioning cream that they sell, which is neutral colored. Obviously they stand to make a profit from that, but you might actually want to consider their advice because if you use that cream within the first year of buying the boots and it results in some sort of discoloration or defect, Fry is happy to replace the boots if you've been using their cream. So let's take a look at the sole of these shoes. The sole is just about entirely made of leather. There's a bit of rubber on the heel here. Uh, nonetheless, most of the sole is made of leather and there's just absolutely no grip to speak of whatsoever. The grip does improve a little bit the longer that you wear them. Nonetheless, these are pretty slippery boots. They are dress boots, so you know that might be expected by some folks. Nonetheless, when I'm walking down steps in New York City, I really have to make sure I'm holding onto the railing because I'm always a little bit worried that I'm gonna slip on this very smooth sole. Another thing that I like about the sole, or one thing that I like about the sole, is it has a recessed stitch around here. Uh, that is meant to make it a little bit more durable as far as it should prevent the threads from fraying with a lot of wear. That said, within the first week of wearing these boots, and this is really important, 
a thread here started to dangle out of the recession where the stitches are. So within a week of wearing these, they, they were starting to come apart. There was a little thread dangling out there. I was really unimpressed with that. It's come off now, but uh, as you can see, it was pretty unsightly. That's something I want to point out. Uh, there's a leather insole as well. The other thing that I want to point out is the Goodyear welt. So this is a 360 degree Goodyear welt. As you can see, it goes all the way around the perimeter of the boot. Now, what a lot of people like about the Goodyear welt is that it, first of all, it's meant to be a little bit water resistant, although this particular boot isn't great in inclement weather, but it also makes it a lot easier to resole. So when you wear through the sole, or if you want to get a new sole, it's relatively easy to do so, particularly since it's 360 degree Goodyear welt, which is even easier to resole than like the 270 degree Goodyear welt, which is very popular out there. So the welt is always a plus when it's a Goodyear welt. Now when it comes time to pick out the size of your shoe, I'm an 11.75 on a Brannock device and most boot companies, or at least a lot of boot companies, they tend to run large. I am a size 11 in Red Wing and Wolverine and Thursday and a bunch of others. Fry, on the other hand, these fit pretty true to size. This is an 11.5 and uh, it fit me pretty well, you know, as far as width and length goes. The only widths available they have is a D. Now D is considered normal, which uh, I happen to be, so that wasn't a big deal for me, but there are five other widths available and a lot of other boot companies cater to those widths. Uh, Fry doesn't, at least not with the Jones lace up. So and if you have anything outside of the most normal width in the world, you're gonna be a little bit disappointed with the range available with Fry. Now, as far as the break-in goes, this leather is pretty thin uh, and it's pretty soft, so the leather didn't need much work at all. That said, the fit is not great. I mean, Fry has a bit of a reputation for not taking their fit testing very seriously. And the, the two different boots fit differently. One had a little bit more arch support than the other. One had a slightly softer heel than the other on the inside in the lining. And just so generally, it's just a bit confusing to wear, especially uh, as they break in over time. I found those issues became a bit more pronounced. So that's just my experience, but something you might want to keep in mind. Now, as far as the price goes, if you like the calfskin Jones lace up, this is going to run you about $348. That's what it costs right now on Amazon.com. It's also what it costs on their official site. It's also what I paid in store at their Soho branch in Manhattan. Uh, the suede version is actually a lot cheaper. It's under $200 sometimes, at least the last time I checked. So that is an option if you like everything else about the boot. Uh, as far as the price goes, I mean, that's generally considered like a mid-range price for men's boots. And Fry does use pretty good quality leather. They use the same tanneries in Mexico as a lot of other really high quality boot companies. That said, given all the issues I've mentioned so far, I think they're a little bit overpriced if I'm being honest. So why should you get a pair of Jones lace ups from Fry? Well, I mean, the best thing about this boot is definitely the leather. I've said this a million times, but the depth of color is really great. Straight out of the box, these just look fantastic. They look very sophisticated. There's got a nice leather lining on the inside as well. The Goodyear welt is always a plus with boots. It's the 360 degree Goodyear welt as well, which makes it you know, a little bit more water resistant than a lot of the 270 degree welts out there. The welt is also nice and subtle. The stitching is subtle. Everything about this boot is really subtle and uh, understated, except for the leather itself, which I think speaks enough for the rest of the boot. They're just great looking dress boots. Uh, a lot of boots out there try and be very versatile. They try and be something you can wear to a bar, but also wear with a suit, and they just completely fail at it. The Fry Jones lace up, you can definitely wear it with a suit. Blue suit or a gray suit, I would even consider wearing these to a wedding. Now there are a few things you might not be quite so crazy about with the Jones lace up. Let's start with the fit. The fit's pretty weird. It's pretty inconsistent between the two shoes. And as far as widths go, they're only available in the D. So a lot of people are gonna be disappointed with that. Now, in regards to the leather, I do wanna make it clear, these are dress boots. So I can't really judge them to the same standards as I would like a really hardy outdoorsy boot like the Thousand Mile or something like that. So I get that. This isn't a huge issue, but the leather does scratch pretty easily. It's pretty delicate. Uh, it can't really take a lot of water either. Um, again, it's a dress boot, so that's not a big deal, but it is something you're really gonna wanna keep in mind. The bigger issue with this boot, there's skiving along some of the stitches. That's a sign of pretty bad quality control. Some of the threads that are coming loose at the bottom of the sole within the first week of wearing it, that's also a sign of bad quality control. And given all these issues that I've just mentioned, I think they're a little expensive for what you're getting. All right, so those are my thoughts on the Jones lace-up boot from the Fry Company. The full reviews in the description below and make sure you subscribe. We've got a ton more reviews coming up.